Yutani Blog Alien AI Robotics Sci-Fi and Technology Interface 3053 Ready for inquiry Hello, this is Clara, but you can call me Mother, and welcome to another episode of the Yutani Podcast. Today is a first. We're on Twitch, along with Megzi. She is designer of Megan Allison Design, and I first came across her stuff back in Sydney at Supernova. So, Megzi, would you like to tell us about what you do? Uh, great. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be on a podcast. This is my first ever podcast, so really, really keen, a little nervous. Um, my name's Megan. I'm from Sydney, Australia, and basically I create enamel pins, uh, holographic stickers and other apparel. I am basically a freelance designer, do this in my free time, um, and the variety of my products uh, tend to be uh, inspired by kawaii culture, but I like to put that sugary, sweet kind of twist on a lot of darker themes such as sci-fi and fantasy. I really love your stuff. I've, I'm actually wearing a, a jacket right now with one of your pins on it with the um, the iridescent rainbow xenomorph. Ah, uh, yeah, I love that one. The rainbow plating makes me so happy. The more sparkles and rainbows there are, the happier I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be so addicted to your shop. I'm just going to buy everything. <laughs> but what we would like to talk about today is um, how you got into uh, what you do as a creator. Like, when did you start deciding, oh, that's it, I'm going to make enamel pins or make shirts or, or all that sort of thing? So I, I did a graphic design course at university. I found during that time that it, it did suck a lot of the creativity out of my um, out of my life. So it took me a couple of years to really slowly get back into art and designing things. Um, about two years ago, I figured why not spend my time working on something creative rather than watching Netflix every evening. So that was kind of my <laughs> <laughs> initial motivation. And um, you know, over two years, it's just kind of gone from there. I'm I'm. I put so much of my extra spare time after work into designing and creating and working on the small business. Um, it, it, it's what keeps me sane. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can totally uh, sympathise with that. I'm a jeweller myself, and I I was thinking of actually taking a graphics design course next year, so hmm, I might end up doing that. <laughs> um, so which of the Alien movies do you like the best? So my favourite is Alien Resurrection. Um, I, I'm not sure your opinion on that movie, but it's the one... I, I, I love all the movies. Oh, you love all of them? <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, really, I'm really drawn to that one. Um, and the reason being is because you get to see so much of the Xenomorphs in that mm. movie, like the, uh, the digital graphics, and you get to see their entire body... Um, one scene that comes to mind is when they're swimming in the water. Like, that just blew me away the first time I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, which uh, breed of the xenomorph is your favourite? So uh, I, I don't know many types of the breeds, but I, I can say just the, like, the traditional one, the, the one that's in the, in the original movie. Oh, okay. Maybe you can explain it to me a bit more. But <laughs> so some people call that the drone. It's a solitary xenomorph, or most people say the big chap. Right. Um, it's the classic, and I, I like that one too. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's probably my favorite one. Yeah. Awesome. Um, which of your designs is the most popular? But which one of your designs is your favorite? So my favourite design is actually the the rainbow xenomorph pin. Um, I call it the pastel rainbow or the, the kawaii xenomorph um, design. It also happens to be my most popular um, go figure. Uh, there's just something about the, the rainbow glitter in that particular pin um, and the little elements of, like, you know, the stars and, and the rainbow pastel along with the black of the xenomorph that just, it, it makes me so happy. I'm glad everybody likes that one too. When I, that was actually the first, sorry, the second pin design that I ever made. Um, and when I designed it, I, 
I never really thought long term about it. I didn't think about the market or or fans of the alien movies. I just kind of designed it because I like xenomorphs and I think they're pretty cool and awesome. Um, so it's been so so great to me that so many other people have enjoyed this pin as well. Um, recently, I attended Supernova Sydney. This is the first time I ever have um, sold in person at a convention, had a table. And honestly, it blew my mind seeing everybody's faces light up when they picked up my pins and they're like, oh, cool, it's alien. Oh, look, it's xenomorph, it's all glittery and sparkly. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'm so glad they, they enjoyed them. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> um, I was one of those people. <laughs> I actually, I came across after um, the panel with Dane Hallett and Matt Hatton, who actually worked on the film. And I got Matt to pick a pin out for me. I was like, which pin do you think represents me? And he picked the um, the rainbow uh, iridescent xenomorph one. So I was like, yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, what do you uh, think about the, the characters of the movie going away from the xenomorph? I know that's your absolute favourite. Yep. Who, who, who would you say is your favourite human character? I, I guess I, I really like Ripley. Um yeah, she's cool. Do yeah. you like Ripley 8 over Ripley? Because some people say that's a different person, so they, they don't like to say that it's, just, it's the same one. The, the the Ripley that's in Alien Resurrection? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, okay. I, I do like her best from Alien Resurrection. I can see how she is a different character, but I like that combination of the fact that she's, you know, even more more deadly, more powerful. Um... Yeah, I love that about her too. <laughs> totally kicks ass and uh, along with Cole I Cole is probably one of my favorite synthetics out of the universe um I know that other um other ones have their appeal but I really really like um Annalie Cole I think she doesn't get enough credit yeah yeah she's very cute as well actually I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't, oddly sometimes I find um like the darker characters or Anything that's a little bit evil, just cute and amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad that you've got this sort of quiet aesthetic because I come from a background where I'm into Lolita fashion and street fashion. So as soon as I saw your stuff, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really awesome. Um, when was the first time you, you watched an Alien movie? Like, how old were you and, and which movie was it? So my earliest memory of watching um, an alien movie was with my mum, probably early high school years, so about around, you know, 12 to 13 years old. Um, that was kind of my, my me and mum time. Uh, she'd introduce me to a lot of classic movies, sci-fi, fantasy, uh, and I was probably too young to watch the alien movies, to be honest, but uh, I just remember it being such an enjoyable I'm sitting down with her um, and just getting immersed in this kind of culture. Uh, another standout movie for me at that period of time was um, Pitch Black with Vin Diesel. Oh, yeah. So, Classic. Yeah, you can kind of see the inspiration there about um, how these kind of – more like they're not they're the good guys. Yeah. Those kind of characters appeal, appeal to me. Um, yeah, that's, that's my earliest memory. Um, of of other sci-fi's, would you say Pitch Black is one of your like favorite, or do you have like any others that you particularly like? I like Event Horizon as well. Oh, me too. <laughs> I think I feel like we're kindred spirits. <laughs> uh, and it, it, this makes me want to have another movie night and just go through and rewatch all these movies. Oh yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. Um, are you looking forward to the new Predator movie that's coming out soon? I noticed that you've also got pastel Predator pins, which is, like, totally awesome. <laughs> so somebody messaged me on Instagram the other day about that, and I didn't actually realise there was a new movie coming out, so I'm going to have to <laughs> watch the trailer for Two that. Two weeks. Out. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I've, I've actually avoided all spoilers and trailers um, until I watched the movie because I wanted to see whether it would affect me any different. Because usually I stalk a movie to death. I watch all the trailers, the virals. I participate in all of the mini games that they put on the website. So I'm going to see if experiencing Predator without all of that impressing on me would, would change my opinion. 
Right, yeah. Well, I'm, pre- I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to these kind of movies. I suppose I have the benefit of just being a general viewer. Um, like, I love, I love all the series, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't consider myself a hardcore fan. So luckily, like, there's a pro to that. I can just go in so open-minded and just enjoy it. That's really cool. Yeah. I like really like that. Um, some some would call me a hardcore fan, but I I go in with an open mind too, and I, I really mm. like um I really like the prequels. I I notice in your uh response in my um interview with you, um the written interview which is on the blog on Yutani blog, um that you said you you don't particularly feel that the prequels stand out to you as a casual viewer. I I, I don't I don't even remember the storylines. Um. <laughs> I remember being excited for them because I don't know much about the lore um, and and I was keen to, to learn a little bit more about um, yeah, the, ori- the origin, origination of the Xenomorphs and um, how they kind of developed over time. So I, I enjoyed it from that aspect, but um, to me, it just I there was something a little lacklustre to them. Mm. Um, actors were great, though. Mm. Is, um, okay wonderful i just oh i just i uh, maybe it's the the nostalgia of the original movies that does it for some people and it's hard oh. it's hard to beat nostalgia so <laughs> it is it is really tough um it's it's really funny the way the fandom is there are people with who that let that nostalgia stop them from enjoying the new movies and mm. there's some people who really enjoy the new movies despite the nostalgia so it's i, I understand it's a very uh, opinion splitting sort of thing is there any other um Phantoms that you're into apart from sci-fi. Um, you, you know what? Not not really. Like when I get the time to watch TV or Netflix, I kind of just go for uh maybe some showcase Showtime shows like uh, Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. One I watched recently was Vikings, recommended to me by by a viewer. Um, I'm yeah, I'm pretty easygoing. Um in terms of what I do watch. I think my favourite genre, though, if we're going to pick between sci-fi and fantasy, is the main two. I would probably say fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my husband loves um, fantasy over uh, sci-fi. He's a really big Lord of the Rings fan. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing a spanner in the works there, but... <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> There's a lot of crossover these days, mm, and that's um, true. yeah, I think most of the I, I, I think the battle for whether Star Trek or Star Wars is better is also still ongoing. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, yeah. At least I have seen Star Wars, right? I'm not yeah. one of those people who haven't seen it. <laughs> um, are you aware that there's actually a new, um, I guess, novel coming out? from a, a female author um this it's called alien echo and it's actually based on um some sort of uh it's, it's it's supposed to be the first adult or young adult novel for the alien universe how how do you feel about something like that oh i think um bringing alien stories into to other media is, is wonderful uh, not that i have much time to read nowadays but <laughs> Yeah, true. I, I I do love that concept. Anything that expands upon the, the universe, I think, is great. Um, it's just about a lot, you know getting it out there so everybody knows it exists, really. Um, mm. Especially for people like like me who who don't follow what's what's really happening within within the fandom, and um, we just wait for new movies, I suppose. But yeah, it sounds really interesting. It, do you know if there's any plans for like a TV show? Because I'd be really into that. <laughs> there, there are rumors about it. I, I can confirm. I've heard stuff from people in the know. <laughs> so, so that's it's going, it's going to happen. But I can't reveal any more details than that, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I'm, I'm really excited because next year is supposed to be the 40th anniversary of Alien. They've got uh, what they call the Tongle Short Film Project, where they've applied for uh, a whole bunch of fans out there who are legitimate filmmakers, I guess, and actually pitch a story. And then they get a budget from Fox and they get to use um, assets from the movie and actually make 
these uh, eight to ten minute short films to be shown next year, which is kind of cool. Oh, that um, sounds wonderful. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So there's gonna there's, they're expecting a lot of alien stuff to come out between now and next year. So that's it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, I can just imagine now what some of these creatives are gonna make. Oh yeah, you know. I'm just I'm just so happy to have so much alien stuff again because for me I feel like I've been waiting since Alien Resurrection pretty yeah. much for um for stuff that's decent so it's it's really good. <laughs> yeah right. I suppose there was a lull of about ten years, wasn't there? Until yeah, if you're not mm. counting AVP and AVPR, which right. I. Uh, <laughs> I know some people don't don't like those movies, but <laughs> I, I like AVP, but AVPR was a bit too full on for me. Um, I was also told that uh, Alex White, who is the author of The Cold Forge, the most recent um, alien book that came out, he actually quite likes your um, patches and pins. I think he was um, aiming to get one of the patches or pins soon from your stall. So well done. Oh. You've got people who are... <laughs> involved in the alien universe becoming really big fans of your work so that's really cool oh nice thanks for letting me know that oh it makes me kind of like <laughs> embarrassed but i'm excited at the same time i'm still getting used to the fact that uh you know people people are seeing my work online and it's really really heartwarming every time i hear good feedback so oh that's cool <laughs> um you said that you don't play much of Alien Isolation. Which which part of Alien Isolation are you up to and, and which part do you find the most scariest currently? So I, I downloaded the game uh, as a request from a viewer. They wanted to see me get spooked. Um, so uh, I, I unfortunately I started the game on like easy settings, which isn't the best for getting spooked in the game. I think we made it just up until the part where the the, well, the Xenomorph first shows itself. So I'm really keen to actually restart the game, probably on hard settings, um, and just do like a, a game marathon. Uh, my first impressions of that game, though, however, is wow, like the 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 design. It's also like retro. It's so amazing. The graphics look great. Yeah, uh, I think they call that um, a cassette. Um, aesthetic so uh, I've got a, a friend of mine on um, Facebook her, her name is Alicia and she runs a group called um, uh, Alien Isolation Obsessive Disorder and she has finished the game I think close to 20 times on Nightmare she's really good <laughs> she puts me to shame but she's really great she uh, she would join in while I'm playing and actually tell me what to do it's like so, so which way do I go next so what do I do next yeah. It's great. It's like having cheat on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty hopeless at games, so I can envision myself dying quite a lot in Alien <laughs> Isolation. <laughs> There's supposed to be a new game coming out soon um, from Cold Iron Studios, which got acquired by um, uh, Fox Next Games uh, or uh, their gaming sector. So there's going to be, I think maybe next year we'll hear about that. So that's pretty cool as well. Oh, yay. Extra hype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, are you going to be doing any conventions again soon? Are you going to go to Comic Con Sydney? I'd I'd love to do more convention uh, conventions this year. I did put in an application for Comic Con, but I have a feeling that they're already they're already booked out in terms of their artist alley tables. So I just gotta I guess be more on top of it now that you know my first convention was such a success. I am keen to do more, um, and definitely bring with me more xenomorph merchandise for sure <laughs> <laughs> awesome um when it comes to your uh shirt design my other cat is a xenomorph that one um what gave you the idea to make something so so cute yet something that looks so deadly <laughs> <laughs> well basically xenomorphs to me are space cats um, it's just really deadly ones. <laughs> I just, I, I just find them so cute. They're almost, um, they're almost, I've always been a fan of, like I said before, about fantasy. So what comes to mind is dragons. They remind me also a little bit about uh, dragons because they've got, you know, the, the four legs in some cases and their long tail. Um, I'm really, really drawn to their designs. So, um, I have three cats myself. I'm just a little bit of a crazy cat lady. So <laughs> I wanted I wanted to do a design that involved cats just because I hadn't brought one out yet. Um, and I kind of merged the two. 
So on the actual design itself, um, the three cats that are featured are, are <laughs> my cats, <laughs> my, <laughs> my three little babies. The one Xenomorph is actually holding is a, is a rag doll and his name is Snickers. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. <laughs> what are the names of the other ones? Uh, Crunchy and Hershey. So, can't tell. We've got a little bit of a theme going on. <laughs> uh, that's really cute. I love it. Um, what other things would you like to see come out of the alien universe? That like, have you ever had a dream or something where something really cool has happened, alien themes, and you're like, wow, this would make a really good show or a game or something? I I still really like the concept behind Alien Resurrection where um, they tried to domesticate the aliens um, and obviously that's just not possible but it would be interesting to see that concept um, played with a bit a bit further um, oh yeah so some, yeah. some sort of like mind control or something like that yeah or, or maybe even even uh, humans and the xenomorphs interacting maybe in in a positive way like maybe one actually becomes a friend of a human in some sort of way that would be interesting to see yeah they've, they've got some they've got some so, sort of thing in the new predator movie coming out which is plays along that theme right so so yeah we'll, we'll get to kind of see it happen and we'll see how the people respond to that <laughs> <laughs> i would i would love for um uh a character to be able to interact with the xenomorphs on screen. Uh, everyone seems to have a problem with uh, Android David doing it, so maybe if they could have um, a character like from the extended universe, like Eloise, she was part Android, part xenomorph, and she could actually get the xenomorphs to follow her. She was kind of like the um, unofficial leader, which is really cool. So, yeah, that would be really awesome to see. Yeah, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what sort of what what's the most memorable um interaction you've had with a fan of your work um probably this to be honest <laughs> <laughs> um uh, like i mentioned before about sydney supernova 2018 just seeing uh, people's faces as they came by my table and had a look at my products and uh, just the way they they smiled and were like whoa alien um, that was, that was really, really awesome. But I just, I, I'm, I'm open now to a whole new world of alien fans and just really appreciate the opportunity to, to be able to talk to yourself. I feel like you're, you seem to be a pioneer <laughs> in this section and, um, it's really inspiring to see the work that you do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've only just started. I'm still a noob. <laughs> um, what sort of um, what sort of things did you imagine yourself doing in five years' time? Do you still imagine yourself doing this sort of design work, or, or did you want to get into a certain sort of career path? I think I'd certainly love to to take this further um, and be able to run this business from home per se. It's not quite there at this stage, but um, it would definitely be ideal. I feel like at the moment I don't have enough hours in the day to develop as many products as I want to bring out. Um, I guess my aim is one new product a month, but even that sometimes is a struggle. Um, so yeah, I'd love to love to keep growing it to the stage where I, this could be, you know, fin financially stable income from home. Wow. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm trying to do that with myself with my jewelry. I'm, I'm starting a, a co-op studio soon so yay for that <laughs> i hope we can both get what we want yeah like you know i listen to a lot of other podcasts in and around etsy and, and entrepreneurship and it's all really motivating motivating and inspiring sometimes honestly i feel like if i sit down on the couch for half an hour then i'm wasting time and i should be working on new products so it's kind of like a catch-22 because you do have to put in so much extra effort. This is basically like working 24 seven. Um, but you know, th there is rewards there if, if you put in the work. What was it like being received by the creative community in uh, Sydney Artists Alley? I know um, I've had my experience as a 
a person who has been on Artist Alley in, in um, I guess, conventions before and it's all been, like, really great. Do, do you find it really being able to communicate with people or, or really some people, like, kind of shut off and too busy doing their own thing? What was it like? Well, I, I tried my best um, over that weekend to, to go around and visit other artists. A few of them, I had seen their work on Instagram, so it was really nice to put a face to the name. Um, even just the stalls next to me, you know, I had a chat with them. Um, I told them this is my first time doing a convention. And, you know, everyone was really open to giving me advice about what days are quiet, what to do next year. Um, so everyone was really welcoming. Everyone was also, I suppose, very tired. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a really good positive experience. I'm I'm a big advocate right now in terms of um, promoting other Australian artists where I can. Um, you know that goes across all social media platforms: Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. So you know, meeting and networking with other Australian artists is is really important to me. That's really cool. I really admire that. I love that. I've been trying to sh shed a light on um, creatives within the industry and fan creatives as yourself. Um, it's It's been really hard to get any of the girls to respond to um, interviews because uh, a lot of them are a bit scared to put themselves out there. So thank you for being the first. <laughs> oh, okay. No problem. I'm, I'm super nervous, but you know, <laughs> sometimes you've got to, you've got to go outside your comfort zone to to really develop yourself so you know one step at a time <laughs> cool do you, would you ever consider going interstate for a convention yeah i would certainly love to do that i i'd have to look into the logistics of it um taking time off work and flights versus driving but i i would definitely love to do it i, I know there's a few people in wa fans on instagram that would love to see me and meet me in person so it's it's definitely on list of future plans um most likely next year that's cool my, my goal that's awesome um is there anything you want to say out there to the alien community now that they're gonna hear you and see you for the first time um i i would love any feedback from the alien community um if you guys are looking for a particular type of merchandise or some sort of theme or you have ideas but you haven't been able to find it anywhere uh, please let me know. I, I'd love to cater cater to you guys um, <laughs> in my own style, of course. But um, I, d I just I would love to bring more joy to you um, with new designs. Cool. All right. I think that's about it. It's a wrap. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much for coming on to the show today, and I really look forward to seeing more of your designs. And if you're ever down uh, Melbourne way. Hit us up. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you for coming on to your tiny podcast. Great. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. This is Colony Ship Covenant reporting. All crew members, apart from Daniels in Tennessee, tragically perished in a solar flare incident. All colonists in hypersleep remain intact and undisturbed on course for Orgai 6. Hopefully this transmission will reach the network and be relayed in six years. You can now support Yutani Podcast on Patreon and subscribe to Yutani.blog to stay up to date.